In this video, we're going to talk about a really important paradigm shift in social networking software and its development architecture that's happening because of Web3. And it has to do with something called social graphs. Hey, this is Julian just popping up here for a second. This year has been rough, but it's never been better to command a six figure job. The average salary of a blockchain developer is 120K. We have a very special Black Friday offer coming soon to teach you just that. Join the waitlist down below. A social graph is basically a representation of the interconnection of relationships in an online social network. So what that looks like today is basically the pattern we have with applications, where a user creates an account with a profile, they post content, they follow other users who post content, and there's a curated feed of this content that gets recommended to them. Every time you like a photo or follow someone new, you're adding to your own personal social graph. If you were to map out your own social graph on like a whiteboard, it would basically be this massive spider web of connections and data. And this is really at the core of what makes Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok so powerful. It represents your digital identity and it's how they're able to monetize and how they're able to cater to your interests and keep you on the platform as long as possible. Now the term social graph has been used for a long time, but it really became popularized thanks to Mark Zuckerberg and Meta. Back at a conference in 2007, the term was used to explain how the Facebook platform would take advantage of the relationships between users to offer a richer online experience. The problem with this is the platform owns your personal social graph. They're collecting all of your personal data and selling it to advertisers, yes, but you're also not able to port this entire network that you've built to any other application. Your whole network of friends and content and your audience belong to the social media platform. If you were to get banned on Twitter or TikTok, you're locked out of your account. You can't take your content and followers with you to a new platform, you literally just lose everything. And this is entirely intentional. As a user, if you leave, say, Instagram permanently for another site, then Instagram loses the opportunity to sell your data to advertisers. So they have to do everything in their power to create exclusivity with social graphs. And you end up having to spend the time and energy to keep up across every social platform you sign up for, which is super exhausting. I think about deleting myself completely from the internet like all the time. So with Web3, we have the potential for a solution to this. Thanks to the nature of blockchains, Web3 developers can share data, APIs, and backends the same way you can with open source software. Essentially, you can take the backend infrastructure that someone else has built and just create a new user interface and new experience with it. By doing this, in Web3, social graphs now become portable. If you build an audience on one platform, those same followers are now immediately available across any social platform platform built using the same backend. One project that is already making this happen is Deso. If you haven't seen the previous videos on Deso, it is the only layer one blockchain designed to support infinite state applications necessary for the scalability of social media networks. Deso gives you control over your social graph and makes it easy to port your information, content, NFTs, coins between applications. Every person that joins the Deso network gets a Deso identity. Similar to MetaMask on Ethereum, your Deso identity allows allows you to log into any app built on the Deso ecosystem and bring your profile, followers, content, and funds with you. And no single party has exclusive access to your Deso social graph, taking power away from Web2 giants. I'll leave a link down in the description below so you can check out Deso.org as well as the previous videos from this series I'm doing with them. But I think this is interesting as a developer in general, when you're building software for the future, thinking about whose hands you're putting the power in based on the architecture that you choose because we have more options than ever now and as builders it's going to be up to us to decide how we create the web going forward that's it for this one thanks so much for watching subscribe for more web3 videos and i'll see you next time